lead poisoning or plumism caused by repeated exposure through swallowing lead or inhaling lead-containing substances can have detrimental effects on the developing central nervous system. Primarily because of a reduction of lead in paint, gasoline, and food, the average blood lead level of children in the United States has decreased over the past 20 years. However, even low dose accumulation can cause hyperactivity, aggression, impulsivity, and irritability. Although rarely seen today, very high levels of lead cause encephalopathy with coma, convulsions, and death. Lower levels of lead in the blood can produce serious complications or no symptoms at all. Low amounts can cause anemia and renal damage. In children, the signs may be vague or nonspecific and can easily be mistaken for other illnesses with symptoms such as paresthesia, fatigue, irritability, lethargy, and abdominal discomfort. Moderate levels can cause tremor, headache, diffuse abdominal pain, vomiting, weight loss, and constipation. Lead poisoning is most often seen in toddler and preschool aged children, usually peaking during the summer months. Socioeconomic status and ethnic background are not factors in relation to risk level. Lead is found throughout the environment, but primarily in lead-based paint, lead-contaminated house dust, insecticides, highway pollution, drinking water from lead pipe plumbing, and industrial exposure. Food can also be contaminated if it is grown near sources of lead pollution or stored in glazed pottery, leaded crystal or antique pewter containers, and cans that have lead seams. Other sources include folk medicines, some cosmetics, hair dyes, ceramic tile glazes, colored inks, old wallpaper, and some costume jewelry. How is lead poisoning diagnosed? By a blood lead level test. A result higher than 10 micrograms per deciliter warrants intervention. Routine screening is recommended at one year of age, while children at risk should be screened at six months of age. Also done are CBC, iron levels to assess for anemia, BUN, creatinine, UA to assess for renal damage, and abdominal x-rays which are positive with ingestion of lead. Treatment for lead poisoning is through the administration of chelating agents that cause a chemical binding of lead with the drug, allowing it to be removed from the blood and excreted by the kidneys. Several drugs are used for chelation therapy. Oral agents include succimer and penicillamine. Succimer, a water-soluble derivative of British anti-leucocyte, or BAL, is the first choice for oral treatment of children who do not show signs of encephalopathy. Adverse effects of succimer include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, loss of appetite, bone marrow and liver toxicity, and foul-smelling urine and or stools. Penicillamine has been used for children who exhibit persistent but low lead level toxicities after previous chelation therapy. Adverse effects include nausea and vomiting and hematocologic and skin reactions. BAL is administered via deep IM injection, usually for a five-day course of therapy. Dimercaparol is the only type of BAL preparation available in the United States. The injections are quite painful. Other side effects are fever, tachycardia, nausea, vomiting, salivation, watery eyes, diaphoresis, and unpleasant breath odor. For treatment of lead encephalopathy, BAL is given in combination with editate calcium disodium, administered by IM or IV routes. For editate calcium disodium, which has major side effect of renal toxicity, the IV route is preferred. For a child diagnosed with lead poisoning, you would monitor vital signs, assess neurological status, monitor kidney function via INO and lab results, administer chelating agents as prescribed, assess the child's response to treatment, watch for side effects, rotate injection sites if the IM route is used, facilitate screening tests for other family members, ask about possible sources of lead exposure in the child's home environment, and provide comprehensive information about lead poisoning, treatment, and prevention. After the initial treatment is completed, the child's blood levels should be checked every three to four months.